Today on our 2009 Pontiac G6, we're going to be installing Roadmaster's XL Base Plate Kit, part number 3132-1. And this is what your base plate's going to look like when it's installed. As you can see, you really only can see the adapters that come out that hook to your tow bars. The rest of the system is going to be hidden behind your bumper. It's compatible with all Roadmaster tow bars and quick disconnect systems. It comes with 8-inch safety chain cable extensions to give you that optimum length so you don't have to worry about turning, especially if you have a high-low adapter or extension on your RV. And it's held in place by a 5 8 inch hitch pin and clip. There's ears located on the outside of the tow bar connection, and this will allow you to lock in the quick disconnect to prevent any theft. You can get one here at eTrailer.com with part number RM-302 from Roadmaster. Now that we've gone over some of the features, let's show you how to get it installed. We'll begin our installation here at the front of the vehicle with the hood open by removing the six plastic push pins here at the top of our front fascia. You can use a flat bladed screwdriver to go underneath the center tab, pop it up, and you can pull the whole thing out. Repeat that for the remaining five tabs. Next we need to remove the five bolts located at the front, and then there's one more on each side for a total of seven. You remove those with a seven millimeter socket. This is the bottom of the front fascia. Next, we'll remove the two small push pins located in the lower panel on the corner of the fascia. You can use a trim panel remover tool or a screwdriver to pop those out. After you remove these two push pins, there'll be two more push pins on the opposite side that will have to be removed. Now so we can pull our fender liner back, we're going to remove the three push pins located here with our trim panel remover tool, flat bladed screwdriver, or a pair of needle nose pliers. We're now on the fender well on our passenger side. We're going to remove the small bolt located here with a 7mm socket. Then we'll remove the bolt at the top here where our fender meets our fascia with a 10mm socket. And then remove the three push pins located between that bolt and the bottom of the inner fender liner. And then you repeat that same process on the other side. Now you want to pull your fender back, get your fingers behind it there. Once you've got that pulled back, there'll be a bolt located along this upper edge here. Remove that bolt with a 10 millimeter socket. Now repeat that on the other side, and that'll make your whole fascia become loose so you can pull it off. If your vehicle is equipped with fog lights, you may need to disconnect those. You can remove the fog light by pulling the clip back on each side and pulling outward. Do that for both fog lights and then set your fender liner aside. Now we'll need to trim out our air deflector to make room for our base plate. I've gone ahead and marked the locations where we'll be cutting. We'll be removing these sections here. You can use a cutoff wheel or a pair of tin snips to remove it. We're just going to be using some tin snips. And then just pull it out of there. And you repeat the same process on the other side. Now underneath the vehicle, just in front of the tire, we're going to need to trim some additional parts out of our air deflector. This will give us access to our subframe bolt where we'll be connecting our base plate. Now we've got our holes cut out. Now if you did use a cutting wheel, you may want to take just the razor knife just to go in there and clean up some of those rough edges. And you repeat this same process on the other side. Now we'll need to take out the two 21 millimeter bolts from our subframe, but before you do that, you want to make sure that you support your subframe. So if you're doing this on the ground, you can use a regular jack stand, put that underneath the front of your subframe. We have a lift here, so we're using a steeple jack. The part that we cut away earlier is going to expose the head of the bolt on our subframe that we need to remove. You can remove this with a 21 millimeter socket. You repeat that same process on the other side. To make it easier to install your base plate, remove this pin on your bumper that connects your air deflector on your passenger side. As well as this pin here. This will allow you to maneuver it out of the way, making it easier to get the base plate in. Now 
And then you repeat this on the other side. Apply the red Loctite to each bolt. We're now gonna lift our base plate into place. You're gonna to wanna to slide it through the openings that we had cut out previously. And then we're going to install the longest bolts with a lock washer on it and the red Loctite that we applied to the threads. Make sure that the large washer that was on the original bolt is between your base plate and your rubber bushing. Once you get your bolt started, snug it up just a little bit with a 22 millimeter socket, get your other side started, and then snug them both back up. Now torque your bolt to the specifications and your instructions. Next we're going to be drilling out the holes located here in the front using a 17 30 seconds drill bit. Once you've drilled through the first layer, you're going to want to drill through the second layer as well. You repeat the same process on your other hole. Now we'll take the large spacers provided in your kit and slide them down the side of your bumper frame. We're going to line them up with the holes that we just drilled. Once you get them lined up, take the smaller bolts in your kit, put on a lock washer, and apply some red Loctite. Slide it up through the hole in the spacer, and making sure that it goes all the way through. Once you've got it all the way through, take the nut plate provided in your kit, go behind the bumper, and place it on top in between the two rails. We're gonna place the nut plate on the other side, thread our bolt into it, sandwiching the spacer inside of our bracket, holding our base plate in place. Now tighten and torque your hardware to the specifications in your instructions. Now using your 17 30 seconds drill bit again, we're gonna drill out the holes located on the flange here, just behind the corner of our bumper support beam. You repeat that same process on the other side. Now we'll use some fish wire to feed the spacers and bolts up into the frame and down through the hole we just drilled. Now fish wire doesn't come with the kit, but you can pick some up here at eTrailer.com with part number 80101-1. That's for the correct size, which is half inch. That'll get you good to go to complete this job. Start by feeding the coiled end up through the hole that you just drilled. We're gonna work it back to a square hole located on the bottom of the frame. And we'll come out there. First, slide your spacer over your fish wire and push it up into the frame. Then thread on your carriage bolt. Feed it up into the frame as well and pull it back through with your fish wire. You repeat that same process on the other side. Apply some red Loctite onto your nut. Put a lock washer over the carriage bolt that we just fed down and thread the nut on. Repeat that same thing on the other side. Now tighten and torque your hardware to the specifications in your instructions. You'll likely need a 19 millimeter crow's foot in order to torque these. We can now reinstall the components we removed. We're going to start by putting our push pins back in our side panels for our air deflectors. These are going to be the only ones with the smaller intersection. Repeat that on the other side. Next we need to make modifications to our fascia. We'll need to cut out the area here to allow room for our base plate. As you can see we've got it cut out here. We're going to do the same thing in the same location on the other side. And lastly, we'll need to trim off the top fin here on our grill, starting on the outside to the first pillar here on the inside. And now we'll do the same modification on the other side. Now we can put our bumper back into place. We'll hold it up, get it near position, plug our fog lights back in. and then put our bumper back into place. Underneath, you want to make sure you put the five small screws in in the front, all the push pins that we had removed, 
the screws on the sides, and then make sure you do that on both sides. Additionally, you also want to make sure you put your fender bolts in. After you've got your bumper reinstalled, you can install your safety chains. Unscrew the C-bolt, slide it in, slide your chain around it, and then tighten it back down. Do the same thing on the other side. Take your tow bar adapters, slide them in, push your pin through, and then insert your clip. We'll do the same thing on the other. Now that everything's installed, you can hook it up to your RV and hit the road. And that completes our installation of Roadmaster's XL base plate kit on our 2009 Pontiac G6.